the single most important part of the car in ACC is something we cannot adjust, but that doesn't mean that we can't control it and use it to our advantage. In fact, it might already impact your driving, it might even puzzle you, but also you might already use it to your advantage without even knowing. I'm talking about the differential and in this video we'll go through it, I'll explain it in a non-technical way and then at the end of the video you should be able to use it better in your advantage. In simple terms what a differential controls is whether or not your rear tires are allowed to rotate independently from one another. For example, a lock differential would mean that the rear tires are always spinning at the exact same speed. An open differential on the other hand would mean that the rear tires can rotate entirely independent of one another at very different speeds. And then in between are limited slip differentials. You can forget about the term right away again. In GT3s we use those and they only allow a certain difference between the rear tires so they can spin independently but not entirely. So why is that and what's the use of that? The differential we use in GT3s is going to behave differently in different driving situations and that will directly influence how the car behaves. So let me explain the relationships that you need to understand. To get a better understanding let's look at one particular corner and I've chosen Barcelona turn 11 which is a rather long uh, 180 degree right hand corner. The main driving situations we need to tell apart are slowing down and accelerating. And in these two driving situations, the differential is also going to be doing different things and you want it to do different things. In the slowing down and especially the turn in phase, you do not want the differential to be locked because it would force the rear tires to spin at the same speed. That would mean the car wouldn't turn in because in fact you need the rear tires to spin independently and the outside tire to spin a tiny bit faster than the inside wheel. The reason is that of course the outside of the car has to actually travel a longer distance. Just imagine a corner with a radius of 100 meters and imagine the inside rear tire be directly near the curb. So the inside rear tire would drive on a circle with a 100 meter radius. Now the car is roughly two meters wide so that means that the outside tire is actually driving on a radius that is 102 meters. This leads to quite different distances if we think of a 180 degree corner. Using the example of a 180 degree corner makes your calculation a little more easy. We can just take pi times the radius which would be 3.14 times 100, 314 meters that the inside tire is traveling throughout a 180 degree corner with a 100 meter radius. Now the outside tire is on the slightly bigger radius with 102 meters and that multiplied with pi ends up with 320 meters distance the outside tire has to cover. So that means the outside of the car roughly has to travel 6 meters more than the inside tire. This will of course also work with completely locked differentials but it will take the car much longer because it's much more reluctant to actually turn. At the same time you also don't want an entirely open differential because this can make the car overly sensitive on corner entry and you simply might lose the rear end. Now once we go for the other phase, the acceleration phase, the differential changes its behavior pretty much entirely. Under acceleration, once the force from the engine towards the rear tires becomes large enough, the differential will lock, meaning the rear tires are suddenly forced to spin at the same speed. Now, why is that useful? Well, let's just quickly assume a fully open differential as opposed to the lock differential, meaning the rear tires can spin entirely independent. And once you put the power down, that means all the force will go to the inside unloaded wheel, which is not pressed into the ground enough. And kind of all the energy is going to evaporate there with the car not accelerating. You might even see smoke coming up from the rear wheel because all the energy is just kind of transformed into heat there. That means 
that a lock differential is helping with the, you with acceleration because it is sending the torque to the loaded outside wheel and forcing the energy to go onto the wheel that can actually take it, helping the car to get away from the corner. But the lock differential also causes problems. In fact, there are two problems that we can talk about. If you are very aggressive with the throttle, the differential can lock quite instantly and sending a lot of energy through the despite loaded outside wheel, but it can still cause it to lose grip. And this type of grip loss is usually quite fast and snappy and you will kind of be surprised to suddenly use the rear which is something we would just call snap oversteer the other thing is that if you are not giving enough power you will only get the locking effect of the differential without actually producing enough energy to spin up the rear tire and that can lead the car to massively understeer throughout the entire corner because now the lock differential is preventing the car to turn. So what are the driving implications when you are in a car that has a limited slip differential that can both be locked and a tiny bit open without allowing too much difference between the rear tires? So let's have a look what your options as drivers are and also what your tasks are dealing with the negative effects of a lock differential. For example, if you have a very sensitive car into the corner, typically a mid or rear engine car like the Porsche we're using here, because this differential allows too big of a difference between the rear tires, the car can actually over rotate into the corner. And you as a driver can use the throttle and perhaps you have intuitively already done that. But giving the car a little bit of throttle in the sensitive situation into the corner is going to partly lock the differential or fully lock the differential, making the car a little more stable into the turn. This gives me a chance to also show you a bit what you can do with the Popometer software. We here have the Porsche data and you can see I've built myself a sheet which you can do with a membership and choose from all the data channels we have available for all games so i built myself a cheat where we have the speed where we have the pedal inputs where we have the wheel speeds on all four tires and we also have a channel that only shows the difference between the rear tires to kind of get a quicker look at how the difference between the tires evolves and with this view it is quite easy to actually see how the throttle position impacts the differential and whether or not the rear tires are allowed to spin independently or if they are tied together. So for example, let's look at the few situations here real quick. We've just looked at the Porsche. So this is how this looks in the data. You will be able to see that on entry, the rear wheel speed difference is growing quite a bit. And then immediately, as soon as I touch the throttle, the difference between the rear wheels comes down, maybe even close to zero here, which means suddenly the car has much less capacity to rotate and the car becomes more stable. We can see these similar patterns here if we look at the data from the BMW. In this example here, we see the situation where I give too much throttle too aggressively. The differential locks immediately. The outside tire spins up because it can't take that much energy. And you can see the rear wheel tires are spinning much faster than the front tires in situation, meaning, well, we're about to spin and then everything goes haywire. Then we have the situation where we are going to be a little, yeah, kind of early on, on the entry here. We lose speed too early and then we go back into the throttle to keep the car away from the inside curb and prevent it from slowing down more. The other thing that's happening, though, and you can see this here, is that with the throttle pedal applied to say 40 50 percent you will see that the rear tires are now forced to spin at the same speed and that creates the understeer that we suffer from in this corner and you can see um yeah that there's no difference between the front and rear tires really in this situation and then we have the third third situation where we are going to have the kind of perfect exit where we are going a bit more aggressive into the throttle but not as aggressive as in the example where we spun and you can see that yes the differential is locked but the rear tires are also slipping a bit spinning a tiny bit faster than the front tires and if you hit the right amount you are going to have a clean exit where you are just about managing the rear tires 
somewhere between the uh, locks differential and the amount of slip they can take. So during acceleration, your target as a driver is to find the middle ground between the car not getting stuck in understeer with too little throttle and not getting the snap oversteer with too much throttle. In ACC, this means your initial throttle input must be subtle enough to not get the snap oversteer, but large enough to overcome the locking effect of the differential and create a bit of slip. The special thing in ACC though is that the throttle pedals in some cars are a bit insensitive. For example, with the turbocharged cars, it can sometimes take a bit until there's actually torque going onto the rear tires. So you will need to sometimes be quite aggressive with the throttle. It differs per car, but differs per corner, track, setup. There's a lot of variety, but broadly speaking, it's going to be between 50 and say 80 or even 90% for some cars that you need to be really click, uh, quick up until this point in the throttle pedal to overcome the locking effect, keep the car rotating. So you need to experiment with a car that you are driving to find this middle ground. And the important bit is to send enough torque to the outside rear tire so that it slips a bit and keeps the car accelerating without sliding too much. And in an ideal way, kind of your steering wheel just about becomes neutral, still steering into the corner a tiny bit, but rarely actually oversteering. That's an indication that you're over doing it a bit. Your target is to have enough slip that you can control it in a, in a good way. But really the crucial and important bit here is to initially be aggressive with the throttle. If you're too cautious, you're going to get the understeer. If you're too aggressive, you're going to get a snappy rear. So yeah, the middle ground really is the middle ground somewhere in between there, as I said, 50 to 80%, depending on car and situation um, to kind of get the ideal exits that we're looking for in ACC. So we need to discuss a little, is ACC wrong with this behavior because it's a bit specific compared to other games? I'd say yes and no. The general behavior of the car with a lock differential and uh, it's sometimes being open, sometimes being closed, that is all correct. And the torque needed to overcome or, or the torque needed to lock the differential or open it, that is all more or less fine, there is nothing to complain about that. But where ACC is wrong a little is actually with the amount of throttle input that you need, because normally race cars should be a little more aggressive with the throttle pedal. They should already be with very, very tiny throttle inputs. We should already see much more torque coming from the engine towards the tires. And there's actually a nice video from Niels Heusingveld on his channel about the throttle shapes or the um, engine maps Damn, I forgot the right word, but he explains it perfectly. So you can always head over to his channel and have it explained by an actual game developer. The latest car, however, the Ford that came to ACC, it kind of shows less of this behavior. You definitely don't need as aggressive throttle inputs in that car to a get the lock differential, but also have enough torque to overcome the locking effect and create a bit of slip on the outside rear tire. In the Ford, I guess, can be as low as 30% or something where you already get the effect. And this is also why perhaps the Ford is more tricky to drive with the rear axle feeling a bit more loose on the exit. But I think it's more down to the actual torque output based on your kind of throttle map that we have on that car. So to summarize things a bit, let's just quickly recap what we've said. In GT3 cars, we are running limited slip differentials that allow the rear tires to spin a bit independently, especially in the off throttle or coasting situation where you're braking and driving into the corner. On some cars, this will help rotate them. And there are also some cars like the Porsche, maybe some aggressively set up mid-engine cars where the rotation can be a little too much in the corner and you actually need to do something about it which you can do using the throttle pedal. Giving a bit of throttle in the Porsche in particular can help stabilize the car because it partly or fully locks the differential. The other bit you need to worry about or think about with the differential is the corner exit phase, where as soon as you go into the throttle, the torque coming from the engine, even if low, is going to be enough to actually lock the differential, causing understeer if you are too careful with your throttle input. On the other hand, 
if you are too aggressive with your throttle input and you're locking the differ very, uh, differential very aggressively and sending a lot of torque right away to the outside rear tire, which doesn't get enough time to put load on the rear tire, then you can quickly get snap oversteer, which might be overwhelming even for pro drivers. So the target that we have in ACC is to find the middle ground in the throttle input that you need to achieve. But in most cars, you need to be rather quickly to some value at least close or above 50 on some cars, even up to 80% of throttle to go get enough torque on the rear tires to create some slip to get the rotation going, but also to overcome the locking effect of the differential, which can cause understeer if you are too subtle. There is one yeah, caveat, caveat to that, especially in the Porsche. That's why I'm saying the Porsche is not a good training vehicle, because it teaches you to use the throttle on corner entry to stabilize the car. And if you're not aware of all these impacts of the differential, you can, yes, stabilize the car into the corner. But the other effect is that you keep a locked differential, perhaps because you're stuck in the throttle, meaning in mid-turn and then very long until late into the exit of the corner, you will be stuck in understeer, waiting forever for the corner to finish before you can actually put the power down. So I'm, yeah, I'm urging you to maybe as a beginner, step away from the Porsche because it shows some driving behaviors where you as a driver might end up actually creating habits that are mistakes. But maybe now after this video, you can be more aware of that. Let the car rotate when you want to by going off the throttle. Stop the rotation by going into the throttle, but use it very deliberately and not too aggressively. And on exit, make sure you're using enough power quickly enough to overcome the locking effect of the differential, which has an understeer or puts an understeer tendency into the car, but create slip on the rear outside tire to keep the car rotating. And then I hope you are set for, well, faster lap times. So have a good one, guys. Bye.